I've had an interest for many years in neuromyelitis optica. Uh, some 20 years ago, a lot of people would have uh, argued that either neuromyelitis optica doesn't exist or it's a form of multiple sclerosis, but um, in the 1990s, a number of groups, including our own, uh, were able to define a number of characteristics that seem to differentiate neuromyelitis optica from multiple sclerosis, which it closely mimics. So uh, in both conditions, the main clinical manifestations are optic neuritis or optic nerve inflammation and myelitis. Uh, but in general, in neuromyelitis optica, these manifestations are more severe. There is uh, a lesser tendency to have brain lesions. In fact, most patients with neuromyelitis optica early in their course do not have any brain lesions and their brain MRI tends to be normal. Although we now recognize that brain lesions do develop in a significant number of patients. And oligoclonal bands, which is a good marker of multiple sclerosis that's detected in the spinal fluid, is usually absent in neuromyelitis optica. So using a combination of these uh, characteristics, clinical, CSF, and some MRI findings, um, we devised criteria in 1999 that we said could differentiate neuromyelitis optica from multiple sclerosis. <clears throat> and shortly thereafter, at, at Mayo Clinic, uh, in Dr. Vanda Lennon's laboratory working on some of my patients, she identified an antibody um, which uh, we published in 2004, and then by 2005, Dr. Lennon identified that the antibody was reactive to aquaporin-4 that um, has now been shown to be unequivocally a very specific um, biomarker of neuromyelitis optica, virtually never present in MS and really not in any other uh, condition. So um, it's turned out to be a very, very helpful test that has uh, allowed us to make a diagnosis at a very early point. And we've learned that NMO is a little more diverse than we thought. We've learned about various brain syndromes that occur in neuromyelitis optica, for example, narcolepsy, which is not something we see in multiple sclerosis. Another very characteristic one is intractable vomiting and hiccups that may be the first manifestation of neuromyelitis optica go on for several weeks or several months of unexplained hiccups and, and or vomiting. Um, so this is due to a lesion in the medulla, um, very characteristic syndrome of neuromyelitis optica. So we've learned a lot of new things about manifestations of neuromyelitis optica and probably the most important reason to uh, make that diagnosis specifically is the fact that the prognosis is quite severe and the treatments that we use for multiple sclerosis actually do not work in, in general uh, and may actually be harmful to patients with neuromyelitis optica. But we have found that a number of treatments, um, especially immunosuppressive drugs like azathioprine and mycophenolate and rituximab, a B-cell um, uh, anti-CD20 B-cell monoclonal antibody are very highly effective in reducing the risk of attacks of neuromyelitis optica. But we have no approved treatments, so quite amazingly from a disease that was barely recognized 20 years ago, we've had three phase three clinical trials conducted worldwide um, over the past four or five years um, around the world. And the results of um, four of those studies in using three agents, there was one agent that was studied in two trials, um, have been announced over the past year. Uh, one paper appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine about a drug called eculizumab, which is a complement inhibitor, and publications regarding the other uh, two agents, inebolizumab, which is an anti-CD19 monoclonal antibody, uh, that depletes B cells, similar to rituximab, but with a broader range, and also depletes plasma cells and plasma blasts, which aren't uh, depleted by rituximab. And sartrolizumab, which is an anti-IL-6 receptor drug, um, similar to tocilizumab, but modified to have a longer duration of action because of uh, unique recycling mechanism. All, all three agents 
have been shown to have substantial efficacy and reduce the risk of attack somewhere between 60 and 90 percent um, compared to placebo. Some of them were studied as add-on to existing treatments. Some of them were studied um, without any background therapy, just uh, pure placebo control. Um, so this has been an exciting observation. The drugs so far seem to be relatively uh, safe. Of course, there's not long-term experience. And we'll see what regulators do over the next year as far as approval, but I think it's widely anticipated that all three drugs are likely to be approved for treatment of uh, neuromyelitis optica.